Okay. So uh, growing up, um, I tend to find myself as um, sort of a, a maker, tinker of sort of things. Um, and my brother and I spent a lot of time. I grew up in the woods, um, building tree forts. A lot of time out uh, outside, and you know, I was fortunate enough when we come home that um, my mom would have uh, chocolate chip cookies made for us. I don't know, you know, if everyone else is that fortunate, but. Um, I want you to think for a minute, imagine a world where chocolate chip cookies, the recipe for them, was um, patented. Um, and you'd have to pay maybe royalty fees every time you wanted to actually eat chocolate chip cookies. Um, I can't imagine it would be a very fun world to live in. Okay, so anyways, typically we associate the recipe that cookies aren't free, but the recipe for cookies are free. And open source software, they typically say free. Free is in beers, like the recipe for beer is free. Um, anyone can make it. They charge, you know, for distributing it, that sort of thing. Um, I'm getting a little history of uh, open source really quick here. I'm going to read something. Um, I'm sitting where at the uh, Ford Museum. Um, in the early years of automobile development, a group of capitalists, or capital novelists, own the rights to a two-cycle gasoline engine patent, originally filed by George B. Selden. By controlling this patent, they were able to monopolize the industry and force car manufacturers to adhere to their demands or risk a lawsuit. In 1911, an independent automaker, Henry Ford, won a challenge to the Selden patent. The result is the Selden patent became virtually worthless and a new association became uh, the Motor Vehicle Manufacturers Association was formed. Um, after this, it kind of helped institute sort of things like the general public license where people realized that they wanted to release things um, but still have them protected. That way people couldn't take this, this type of uh, information and uh, profit off of it. Um, and with that, we started to see more and more people at the advent of the internet sort of start to communicate and these makers started getting together. Um, one of the more famous um, stories about this is actually Linux. Um, my mobile phone runs it. Um, it runs a lot of different things. Um, it's originally started by just a mailing list. Um, people started communicating saying, hey, we want to make an operating system just like Unix, but I don't want to pay all the money. I still want the features. So slowly, uh, people started mailing each other, sending code back and forth, and now it's become this behemoth, I don't know, you know, years later, um, run some of the world's top servers, uh, Department of Defense servers. Um, a few years ago, I had the opportunity to meet John Hall at PenguinCon, um, extremely awesome guy. He gave a presentation about the Nickelodeon, where back in the day, people were worried that, you know, the Nickelodeon was gonna automate everything. Well, they found out that that sort of thing actually helped promote uh, promote the Nickelodeon. There's also um, can't mention open source about these guys. So Electronic Frontier Foundation helps protect people, rights makers, their sort of privacy, so the big guys don't come in. Um, about 2005, you started to see the Make Magazine came out. Um, now we have Maker Fair in Detroit. Five years later, but. This sort of thing helped also establish the idea where it kind of brought necessarily you didn't need the internet, but you could have a magazine and people could communicate. Um, and we're starting to see the rise of um, hacker spaces, um, do it yourself kind of things. I know that recently I3 uh, is here. Uh, I'm part of the All Hands Active group. Uh, Sandra, I know I have met some extremely intelligent, awesome people. Um, we're starting to see this that uh, people are able to collaborate. Um, over the internet and share these things, you're starting to see it extend more into like the physical world, um, where people can design things online, share with someone, maybe a mechanical person that can build something. Um, here's a good example: someone designed a watch in open source software called Blender. Here's something called Open Cascade, which lets you build 3D models and do simulations, so that someone, you know, mechanical type person, could actually design something like this. Um, there's something called SKDB, which is a way for these people to share, um, like a repository to share these types of designs and information. Um, you can already simulate and test that things will work together and allows people to collaborate and build different parts of this device just in a virtual world. From there, you would have 3D printers. I'm sure people have seen them uh, around the Maker Faire, and those are starting to gain some amount. It kind of allows everyone to kind of collaborate. Um, this is just kind of scratching the surface of I guess the whole kind of open source movement. 
Wikipedia is a really good example of collaborative knowledge where everyone works together. It's open source, the software it's built on is open source. Um, I suggest maybe poking around, just Google open source or check out Wikipedia open source and you'll find all kinds of information. Um, this basically wraps up the presentation. This is um, an ending slide, but um, I don't have any plugs for mine. So if I guess if you just Google, Google me, I'll find you. Mm -hmm.